Okay, I'm joined by former Senator Alan Simpson of Wyoming. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. And uh, you've been fighting the fight over your deficit commission plan for several months now. It came out six months ago. At this point, are you more or less optimistic that Washington's going to come up with a deal? If I were not an optimistic person, I wouldn't have taken the job when the president asked me to co-chair it. I remain optimistic, especially, uh, I hate to see Tom Coburn uh, step away from the Gang of Six, but let me tell you, as long as Joe Biden is in the room, that's one hell of a guy, and I've known him a long, long time, and if he can't get it done, it will not get done, and you don't have to worry about the pundits and all the stuff that goes on. America will just stagger forward, and, and, and we'll pay our dues very heavily. And at the end of the day, is the final plan, assuming there is a final plan, is it going to look essentially what you all drafted uh, in the Deficit Commission, steep spending cuts, uh, uh, some entitlement program changes, as well as some tax revenues on the table? Well, if you hear a guy get up, a guy or gal who's in Congress or in this debate saying, we can get here without touching Medicare, Medicaid, the solvency of Social Security and Defense, just make a great big hee-haw like a donkey at him because that is absurd. You cannot get there without doing the dealing with those big four. So they're going to have to do that, and, and Joe Biden is going to lead them into that. Uh, he's, he's careful. Uh, he, he knows the game. He, he, he knows his players, and it's, I think they're doing just what we did. It takes all these days to establish trust. There's no trust in this town anymore. I think Joe's establishing that. I hear that from the group. So they got to do it. You don't do it. Uh, plan B is like Schwarzenegger said once. He said plan B was Herman DeSoto said to get the ships on the shore and burn them. Let me ask you, your re fellow Republicans, including some of those in those talks with uh, Vice President Biden, the House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, say still no tax revenues, no increase in revenues at all. That is the negotiating position for Republicans. You've suggested that's not possible if they want to solve the problems. Tom Coburn has suggested it's not possible. How do you get Republicans along for the ride on this? I guess when they get smoked and go home and find out that the people didn't get any tax revenue and then lost about 58 different things they loved over the next three years, they'll scratch their heads and say, hey, what happened to this? I love this. Well, you don't have it anymore. Uh, but let me tell you, if these phonies on the outside talking about tax increases don't realize what we're all trying to do, getting rid of tax expenditures. Those are one trillion, one hundred billion bucks worth of breaks that go to the largest earners in America. And if you can't get rid of those, by they're really spending by any other name. And to call them tax increases is just plain fakery, just trickery and lying. On the other side of the equation, you've got Democrats now looking at the results in this New York congressional race saying, look, we were successful in attacking the Ryan plan, the Medicare changes. Some of them are going to say, hey, listen, let's stick with that plan, beat Republicans at this game politically and take them to town 2012. Well, then I hope they do that because then I always say to them, what do you love? Well, I love culture. I love education. I love children. I love the environment. I say, great. Then don't do anything with Medicare and it's on automatic pilot and it will suck up all the stuff you love. Just disappear in the maelstrom of a glutted system that cannot work.